So, a uh, warm welcome also from my side. Um, um, I will present uh, the findings from our Swiss case study in the next few minutes. And um, uh, now, works. well, um, <clears throat> our case study aimed at reducing the stocking densities, as you saw on the first slide. Um, why was that um, an issue in our case study area? We looked at the region in central Switzerland and this region is uh, very much dominated by animal production. About roughly one third of the farms is um, are specialized dairy farms and um, the area is um, famous for pig farming um, uh, with a very high density of, of livestock in Switzerland, but also um, comparably um, high within whole of Europe. So our dilemma is, uh, was, um, um, or a research question we looked at in the case study was to reduce high stocking densities while still being economic profitable. Why bother about the stocking densities in our case study? Um, because they are um, quite a major threat to water quality and air quality um, in the area. Um, for example, there are three lakes in the areas and all of them have been aerated for the last decades um, with a lot of um, also um, taxpayers' money um, because of eutrophication problems. Um, we, our case study area is um, one of those systems which is uh, at the moment rather intensive and only a few farmers have started their agroecological transition so far. Um, the key actors we involved in our uh, multi-actor platform, um, of course, the farmers themselves. Um, we had a couple of farmers associations as well in the platform and then representatives from state and cantonal institutions. Um, mainly agricultural departments and uh, environmental agencies, farm advisors and NGOs. Um, and we looked at or we identified um, a couple of agroecological practices, um, mainly um, due to organic farming, uh, reduced um, nitrogen fertilizer application, but also um, um, we had examples of extensive um, grazing livestock of rare crops, reduced tillage, um, undersown crops in case of organic farmers um, of lower livestock density. And um, also uh, what is quite common in the area is projects aiming at connecting um, habitats together and where several farmers participate in those projects. Also there mainly organic farmers and um, we had interesting um, examples of redesign of the, the farm setup, basically, um, and, um, for example, a pig stable converted to a sprout production. Um, we have former pig farmers um, now growing sweet potatoes, blueberries, and so on. Um, as we heard this morning, um, we had a look at the sustainability implications of all these practices by basically comparing um, farms with agroecological practices against conventional farms. And um, with regard to greenhouse gases, we noticed um, a very large effect of reduced tillage um, on the farms, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, which was mainly the case in uh, for organic farms we looked at. Um, they um, had uh, the reduced tillage in place. Um, then also uh, the effect of a less permanent grassland on conventional farms, which had an effect on greenhouse gas emissions. And um, in general, um, mainly the organic farms applied uh, less fertilizers, as I just um, mentioned, which led to less greenhouse gas emissions. Um, not surprisingly, um, biodiversity scored higher in our um, sustainability assessments for the organic farms because uh, of the pesticides and because they make use of rare breeds and rare crops. Um, but there are also some independent factors um, 
uh, like um, tree habitats, which play the role in the biodiversity scores. Overall, you can see in this um, polygon from SMART, one of the tools we applied, that the difference between organic farms and conventional farms, um, or the, this displays the range um, of the farms, is not so um, high in our case study. Um, so, um, we said organic farms perform very well with regard to environmental issues. So, is everything fine? Um, not, um, not, uh, not entirely because um, the organic farms we looked at um, had only half of the labor productivity of their con conventional counterparts. Why was that the case? Um, because on the conventional farms, we um, so more, mechan uh, more mechanized workflows, we had a higher output and also sometimes the organization was more efficient. Uh, we played around a little bit more with the thought um, of this economic viability and tested what would happen if we now would convert um, a pig farm we assessed um, uh, to a farm growing fruits instead. Um, actually, a quite a profitable um, fruit, apricots, which um, is highly demanded on the Swiss market at the moment. And um, But still, um, even with such changes on the farm, um, some farm income will be lost, at least in the case we modeled, um, although it's still positive. So, um, it's not so easy um, to change the system in our case study with these economic um, constraints. Nevertheless, we looked at three core strategies of reducing stocking densities, which um, the first two aimed at um, adding value to the production, either by direct marketing or by organic production um, to make extensification possible. And then there was a third one, um, about income alternatives like um, the, the one I just um, mentioned, the modeled um, case, uh, fruit production or arable farming. So as we saw, um, with this um, economic, basically animal production at the moment is economically profitable. Um, there's a high farm income attached to it and there are not many incentives to change the system for the farmers. So in the longer term, it might need um, also external factors um, like stricter laws, um, but at the moment they are um, fiercely contested by the farmers. Um, so um, in the middle, in the medium term, it also um, needs kind of a transition to um, also broaden the acceptance of income alternatives um, by um, increasing the availability of knowledge um, about these income alternatives. And this happens mainly in three ways, or would happen mainly in three ways, as stakeholders suggested in our case study. Like, um, first would be to support young farms during a general uh, generation change on the farm um, on their uh, future investment decisions and advise them on income alternatives, including, um, and that's very important, economic um, opportunities of these income uh, alternatives. And um, a second point would be to make advisory services about, uh, of these income alternatives more accessible, because at the moment, often farmers need to prepare a concept first um, before they can approach the, the advisors. And that should, at least in the first step, be quicker in the future with no or low preparation time and also low costs for the farmers when they get advice. And finally, um, advice shouldn't be just top down, but also peer to peer. And um, that's why we also suggest to um, um, implement the network of innovative farmers in the case study area. Also, not only for peer to peer learning, but also to showcase good examples um, and to raise the acceptance of income alternatives um, to high stocking densities at the moment. The key lessons learned in our case study was that the core dilemma we investigated in Uniseco um, 
is um, applies to our case study uh, to a high extent. So um, animal farming at the moment is very profitable and there are not many incentives for the farmers to change their farms. Um, sli slowly the transition has started, but um, transition will continue um, as we perceived it in rather small steps. In the long term, there will be this market and regular uh, environmental changes um, because consumers' attitudes will change um, with regard to um, livestock production. But in the medium term, it needs um, more proactive advisory services, um, and which um, also show income alternatives or opportunities um, to the farmers um, to change from their intensive livestock system to an alternative system. 